Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. Our main topic is still going to be gold, but I won't go metal detecting. Today I'll show you how we take soil samples on a bigger scale to work out where the gold occurrences are. This is crucial information for mining companies who use the results to decide where to drill for gold. I've been on this job for almost two weeks now and today I want to show you what my typical workday looks like. Today we're going to spend the day at my workplace. We're doing soil sampling. I just met Adrian at the major turnoff back there. Now we're going out on our little bush track here and it'll take us another 20 minutes I think until we are at our first drill hole for today. So we're doing about 100 holes a day. It's six o'clock now. Definitely going to be another hot day again. Adrian's got the quad and the, the ogre and all the paperwork as well. The company who is behind all this is a gold company and they want to know where is the gold. Unfortunately we don't see the results straight away but we'll just have to be patient until they release those results and then you can find those reports in exploration reports. We're just gonna have a look what a day at my workplace is like. We have arrived at our first drill hole, which would be somewhere around here. Our job is to take soil samples. It'll be about 30 per row. We've got three rows to go. Number one out of 90 something we'll keep going it'll be a hot one and this is our next hole here I'll be the navigator so there are 40 meters in between the holes 200 meters in between the rows Adrian is on the bike behind me and my job is it <laughs> to find these GPS coordinates quickly so we don't muck around looking for the actual spot so we can start drilling quickly and move on to the next. Adrian's just laughing because I can't find the right spot. Okay, and a little bit this way, so it'll be just here. Scrape, scrape.
used to that. Fill in your holes. That was hole number two. I'm off to find number three now. Depending on the terrain, I'm either quicker or a bit slower. The flatter it is, the easier to walk on, but with these big rocks, my ankles uh, get twisted and I slip occasionally. So it takes a little bit longer, especially when I'm not paying attention where I'm going. Pretty much spot on, just here. Before taking the sample, I wiped the rest of the dust and dirt from the previous hole of the scoop to prevent contamination and false results. Our paper sample bags are numbered and I write those down with the coordinates of the hole. We did a test on our first drill hole and weighed the dirt. The requested 3 to 400 gram samples are equivalent to one flat scoop. After backfilling the hole, I take notes about the regolith and the depth of the sample. one get a few empty ones get the paperwork done and then we'll be off to the next row so when I'm speaking about rows this is what I mean so we already finished this column here last week uh, I don't know did it take us 10 days or whatever it was 10 days yeah. 10 days for this column here and now we're already pretty much working our way towards the bottom of this one here We'll finish this row today, we'll do another one and then we've got three left which we're going to finish tomorrow and then this part of the job will be done but there are more drill holes coming so we're not quite finished. Soil samples are a very important first step for any gold exploration. Our 300 to 400 gram samples are all going to be crushed in the lab and with the addition of several acids the company is probably going to have a full spectrum of a full mineral analysis which could combine more than 42 minerals in the results. They are probably going to test for gold, silver, lead, but also bismuth and arsenic for example. All those anomalies where they occur maybe in a line could give an indicator where to put in money for the next step of exploration. If our soil samples bring good results then the company is probably going to bring in air core drills, after that they're going to do RC drills and if those samples prove alright they are most likely to bring diamond drillers in.
Our samples are in even lines, all very accurate, measured apart. And if there's a line of anomalies going straight through the whole grid, then they are probably going to concentrate on that because although we are only just taking shallow samples, it could be a very good indicator of what's hundreds of meters below the ground. Our little soil sampling operation is low impact. We are on the quad. We don't have to drive our heavy machines or cars through the bush. We use pre-used tracks for the vehicles and then we hop onto the quad. So it's low impact. There's not going to be much damage to the nature. You don't need any big permits to do this type of exploration. And also, of course, it's pretty cheap. It's only two of us compared to a whole drill crew and the trucks and the machines and all that. There's not much that can go wrong in our case. We're coming onto some good looking lateritic ground here. Should pay attention where I'm going. Yeah, coming closer. A little bit higher. That's our spot here. This is a nice little loaming pile. The flats are covered in quartz and ironstone around here and the old timers would have looked for gold and did their sample piles around here. So it's definite sign that there should be gold in the area. Because I'm a prospector, I always have a good look on the ground and have a look at the rocks. And this would be another piece of chalcedony. A few things lying on the ground. I'll pocket this one. I've already got a piece of opalite. This one here. And another one of these ones. So there are gemstones here, there's gold here. We have come across a few things that we found from the old timers. We've got uh, three eggs set so far, a full X, and now a horseshoe. And they wouldn't have horses here for a long time. I reckon 50 years or something. And it's pretty hot. Unfortunately, we haven't stumbled across the big nugget yet. Yeah. But yeah, we find a few interesting things anyway. It's in the middle of the day, we just finished our three rows. I think we are both pretty glad that we are back at the base now. <laughs> yep. The flies are very friendly today, it's super hot. And I think we're just keen to call it a day, have a feed at the pub and a cold drink. Definitely, a couple of cold drinks. Sounds good. We've got a few treasures to show you. What have we got? There, that's a beauty. We picked up this beauty here on the fence line right next to a few cut trees for the timber cutters well the, the fence line cutters they used to build their fences out of timber and they cut the trees down with an axe and yeah i don't know why it was sitting there and then ah, it's pretty hot by the way just a little bit <laughs> and then we found these ones here all in one pile next to a tree trunk same thing in an area where a few trees were cut down and for some reason they decided not to take these. Pretty strange, but yeah, they all didn't have a handle on them. And one of these had writing on it. It says Charleston. Kelly Perfect. Kelly Perfect. Charleston WVA USA. And it's still pretty sharp. So that's four X's or one full one, three X heads, and then also plenty of gemstones. We found an area where the ground was just covered.
covered in agates and I'll definitely head back there and uh, yeah show you guys what it's like out there pretty amazing to see all these different colors amongst the yeah normal ground here which is quartz and ironstone mainly a bit of greenstone but yeah that's definitely agate material this one here is red jasper and we've got a few different ones and I think Adrian wants to cut them and polish them up and maybe slice them and oh yeah look at these bit of orangey pinky stuff that's banded agate here and then we've got a triangle version on both sides pretty cool and then this one here which we cracked open and yeah it had some black stuff in here we're not too sure what it is that's the other half but yeah some pretty amazing rocks out there and you wouldn't even think so when you just see it like that he said that the center was decomposed sulfites ah this black stuff yeah, yeah okay there you go decomposed sulfites oh yeah different again it's pretty interesting out here well we were hoping to uh, hit our toes on a big uh, sun baker nugget but that didn't happen well not at this stage we still got a thousand uh, drill holes to go so <laughs> we still got plenty of time to give our luck a go yeah some relics and agates is something we, which we couldn't leave behind oh yeah and a donkey horseshoe it's not. <laughs> it, it came off a boot. <laughs> That's how the old timers would have had would have had it on their leather boots. All right, knock off time. We're gonna put the bike back on, and then it'll take us about 45 minutes to get back to town. I'm pretty happy with this job. It's one of the better jobs I've ever had, and it's well paid and. Not many people would do it. It's just very hot out there. You got to put up with flies and yeah, not many people can do it. So that's a good thing. I still get my exercise. I walk my uh, four or five kilometers a day here or six kilometers on the longer road. So just because I'm not out prospecting doesn't mean that I don't get the exercise, which I'm pretty happy with. In general, it's a very good job. Good company, good work atmosphere. You got a little insight into my new job anyway. We'll be working on this for another two weeks at least. But uh, from tomorrow on, I'll have the end of the week off so I can head back out bush, so I can uh, do some detecting finally. I'm gonna do some more filming. So yeah, hopefully there will be a video up next Sunday again. I really like my job and I hope that you enjoyed this video as well. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and then I'm gonna see you next time.